Welcome to Jamaica Calling. On June 13 to 18, 2015, Jamaica will host its Biennial Diaspora Conference at the Montego Bay Convention Center in St. James. The theme for this year's conference is Linking for Growth and Prosperity. We sat down with State Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Arnoldo Brown, to discuss the importance of the conference to Jamaica's development goals. Why is a diaspora conference necessary for Jamaica? Well, it is part of the structure of engagement and you know, it was evolved over a number of years uh, in 1992 when the then government started the returning residence program. Um, shortly thereafter, there was a symposium that was held, I think, somewhere around 2003. And arising out of that symposium, which included and involved uh, members of the Jamaican community that lived overseas, the decision was taken that a conference was desirable where Jamaicans would gather every two years to discuss matters that were important to them as well as important to the country. So the conference really was the idea of members of the diaspora in consultation with the government. But I want to go further to say that the structure is not unique to Jamaica because in the case of Ireland, they have what is called the gathering where Irish people from all over the world at a particular point in time congregate in Ireland itself to discuss matters that are of importance to Ireland and a range of other issues that are important to them. So I think the conference is important in the sense that it is a forum for dialogue. It is one of the um, events that allow members of the diaspora to meet with the decision makers in Jamaica and also decision makers in their respective um, places of residence. So I think it's uh, very important and very necessary. How is the Diaspora Conference structured to engage in the country's Vision 2030 goals? The idea of Vision 2030 is that everybody is on the same page in determining what is best for Jamaica. What is this vision? In a nutshell, the vision is to make Jamaica the place of choice to work, to live, to raise families, and to do business. So for the members of the diaspora who may not be too eager to come back to Jamaica to live, certainly they can see Jamaica as a premier destination to do business and also to relax and have fun. And with any vision, you want to have general buy-in. And certainly in 2013, the decision was taken that we needed to incorporate Vision 2030 in the diaspora engagement process so that Jamaicans everywhere would share this view of Jamaica, including working in Jamaica, because we must accept that some Jamaicans leave Jamaica for a better economic opportunity. And without fail, certainly when I travel in the diaspora and engage with Jamaicans, each of them have an aspiration to return to Jamaica at some point in time. And many of them would want to come back long before their um, retirement years. We will only have that happening once people are comfortable that Jamaica is the prime location where they can realize their aspiration. And therefore, Vision 2030 is very critical and central to the uh, diaspora movement because it is about making Jamaica um, the best place on planet Earth, which it is already, <laughs> about making it better than best um, for Jamaicans here and Jamaicans overseas. So they are central to Vision 2030. How important is the diaspora in the path being charted to achieve Vision 2030? There are priority areas that the government has, um, areas such as logistics, uh, manufacturing, uh, tourism, the cultural industries, and I'll give you an example using the cultural industries. Um, animation is now a growing and dynamic area, and we have seen where 
um, Gary Sinclair, a member of the diaspora, is actively involved in the growth of that sector. And there are other persons he has partnered with, local players. Um, and this is a multi-million dollar industry. We can think of our music. There are other members of the diaspora who are less public or less um, you know, celebrity in terms of their stature, but they contribute equally to the um, Jamaican fabric and development of Jamaica in the field of education, the field of health, and so on. And these are two critical areas of Vision 2030 that are pillars to take us into um, first world status. Remittance and tourism are two ways the diaspora greatly contributes to the country's immediate and long-term development goals. But what are the contributions to the country's social development? Well, you know, I mentioned just now education and um, health. On average, we have over um, 200 medical missions to Jamaica annually. These are Jamaican doctors, these are Jamaican nurses, these are Jamaican medical professionals in every field of medicine that you can think about and in, in every aspect of healthcare that you can think about, any range you can think about. And they conduct clinics, um, surgeries, uh, they do elective procedures, and in many instances they do these free of cost. Arising out of the last conference, we had a major health forum in Canada in July of last year that saw the coming together of the leadership of the health sector here in Jamaica, the diaspora members who are involved in healthcare in um, North America, and their colleagues in their respective countries, where on the table was how the diaspora would be able to help us to improve the, the delivery of healthcare in Jamaica. The Multilateral agencies such as the World Bank, the um, International the American Development Bank is of the view that the contribution of the diaspora to the GDP is somewhere in the region of 30%, and this includes their contributions in healthcare and education. In the era of education, um, you know, People have a sort of love affair with their alma maters. So just as how they are passionate about the country, they are passionate about the school that they went to. In the diaspora, they are committed to their alma maters. They contribute regularly to their schools, whether it is in terms of books or the provisions of scholarships. And this also helped to build the next generation of, you know, successful Jamaicans, positive citizens who in turn contribute to their country. How is the diaspora being engaged in trade partnerships and opportunities? JAMPRO is playing a very major role in that and with the suggestion of the diaspora in 2013 we introduced what is called the marketplace and this year, we have brought back the Marketplace and we have also added a feature to it, Marketplace Live. What this does is an expo within the conference. So service providers, um, entrepreneurs, business people, manufacturers can attend the conference, set up their booth, display their wares, make contacts, do networking. We also have the business matchmaking um, element. And this year, we have introduced what we refer to as power breakfasts. So these breakfasts will allow the movers and shakers, the captain of industry, the political elite, and you know, members of the diaspora to interact in a more intimate setting, to discuss commerce, to discuss trade opportunities, because not only do they have the ability to trade with Jamaica, but they can trade through Jamaica with third countries. What is the status of plans for a diaspora bond? For Jamaicans in Canada, the 
Jamaica Stock Exchange main market is now accredited in that market. And what it means is that anybody with a retirement plan can invest on the Jamaican Stock Exchange and get tax credit in Canada. I am of the firm view that at this point in time, any bond issue will have to be a private um, structure, meaning that people purchase equity stakes in companies that are listed on our stock exchange. And that if they do that, they will realize real returns. But we should also recognize that whilst it may not be called a diaspora bond, there's no doubt in my mind that when Jamaica issues bonds on the international capital market, many of the subscribers to those bonds are Jamaicans. But we may not describe it as a diaspora bond. But to speak specifically to the diaspora bond in, ter bond in terms of how it is conceived, the main challenge is not to add to the stock of debt. So the reality is that if instruments can be designed that will be vehicles of investment rather than loans to the government, that type of model would best suit us now. That's it for Jamaica Calling. Join us next time for more info on Jamaica's upcoming Diaspora Conference.